Hello there. Today we worked on with the module turtle. So we needed to use the GUI or the graphic user interface. Finally, some more graphical programming. So we had like a couple of small challenges and then a big project, of course. I can actually go through the challenges here. <laughs> so we have the turtle module, of course. And from the turtle module, we imported our turtle and our screen. Our turtle are, what we can say, the object that do the stuff. And then the screen is, of course, what's in the background. So let's just look at this one. I have my Timmy, which is my turtle, and I have him in the shape of the turtle, and I have him as a dark olive green, which I don't need because I get random colors later. So remove. I have a color list here. So it's red, orange, and so on. And the challenge was to make a triangle, a square, a hexagon, and so on, up to the 10 angles, the decagon. Uh, so how to make this? Well, I have eight, uh, seven different uh, patterns. So from a triangle up to decagon. And I use the eight because it starts from zero and goes to seven, never goes to the eight. Then the pattern is I plus three. So first, we have zero plus three, which is a triangle. So we want to calculate each angle in the inside of the pattern. So first is a triangle, which is uh, where is it 120, then a square is 90 degrees, and so on. Then I choose a random color. From the color list to color my turtle, and for every turn in the range pattern, so it's four turns, not three turns in a square, and so on. Timmy turns. If we start with a triangle for each turn, he turns 120 degrees and then he moves forward 100 paces. And this right here is the screen class, which, uh, which it shows the screen and removes it when the program is gone or I click on it. But yeah, let's just run this here. So first it's a triangle, then a square, then a, uh, I don't remember the names, hexagon, octagon, and so on, until it has its Bam. So this was the assignment with random colors. It was kind of easy, kind of straightforward. The next one, challenge four. Oh. We imported him again. We wanted so of course to use Timmy again. We, I got some new colors that's more bright. And then I choose uh, the angles which he would turn. So zero is he would just walk straight forward. We turn to the right, go back, and then we turn to the left. And I make a while loop. This is when it is random. It goes. I can change it so it does it hundred times in a full loop or something, but doesn't really matter. So again, I have a random color for Timmy. The line that he draws, I make that bigger. I make him faster, and then I choose the random angles. 
and then it moves 50 paces each time. There was another, another method that just chooses his heading. So I think zero was north, uh, east, south, and west. It doesn't really matter the card game. And then we have the screen object again. So let's run this one. So here it just walks random everywhere. New color each time. So that was it. Then we have the fifth challenge. Here. Um, let's see here. Mm -hmm. Oh, here I actually import turtle twice. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter. But here I used the same angles. Or the challenge here was to make a spiral graph. I can actually show it instantly, and it's easy to understand. This. Brrr. Pretty cool. Uh, so. From the challenges before, we know that it uh, that we know how to color him and do that stuff. But we used this time we used RGB to choose the color. She said, "Show me." She showed me how to do it. So I chose a red first. Actually, I had to increase the RGB value or the color mode, to call it, up to 255, because that's what RGB goes from, from 0 to 255. So then I choose a random value for R, G, and B. A random, a random end from 0 to 255. And I make it into color, return color. Because random color, or choosing the color for Timmy, in here, you can put in a string or the RGB value. So here, I have a function draw the size of the gap. For i in the range, 360 and the size of the gap. So Timmy, color, random color. He makes a circle that's a hundred paces wide. Centimeter that right, size of gap. So each, how can we say? It? Each. So yeah, I I put a value for the gap, like five degrees. So it will turn around. Three hundred sixty through time through five. Calculator time. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. 72 times. So it's 72 circles. So depending on how the size of the gap in degrees is to, determines the density of the circles. So yeah, we saw already sort of five. This one. But instead of they have 10. It's half the amount. And so on. So that was the introductory challenges to understand the GUI and how to use Turtle. Then we have the final, final challenge. And it was to draw this painting ish. But instead we have 10 by 10 dots in a random color. Uh, first, she showed us how to get the colors from the image using this program here, or this module. So import colorgram. So we made an RGB colors object list. And from that list, we just printed it here, copied it in, copied it in. 
I can actually do it like this. Let's just show it. Uh, yeah, 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 whatever. I think I just need to go through this a little bit. This is the final result. But this line, all these lines of code makes a list of the RGB colors. So I just copied this into the colors and oh sorry and instead um i made so yeah so in this this new list i took away the values that are too white these two are basically a white color so it wouldn't work that well maybe this one too so we removed the RGB colder is white and put it into a new list. Then we made a function, I made a function. This time we had no help. After this part, we had no help. So first I made a function, return random color. I imported Tim, my turtle, and I make, and I change the color mode, so I can use the RGB. I made him fast, uh, the fastest speed, and I changed it so it doesn't draw a line under him. The pen up function. So for x in range 10, so it will take 10 times, it will, uh, yeah, for, yeah, that's here, for x in 10, so we can loop through this. 10 times, I change the coordinates of Timmy, so where he starts. So he always starts down in the corner, down here. So what the increase does, so every time it loops through again, it increases so it goes to the next row. So I just change those values until it looked really nice. So here is 50. So I increase the paces. Uh, he goes higher by 50 each, each loop. And then for every loop, he moves 10 times to the right, making a dot that's 20 paces wide random color and moves 50 paces also and then it makes a perfect square of dots just like this easy peasy took some time but it wasn't wasn't that hard but then we look at my teacher's code Yeah, she has the same, started in beginning. Bam, bam, bam. She actually even changes the heading, so the color isn't close to white. It doesn't matter to me. Tim forward 300, that's... She changes the coordinates already here. And she makes a variable called number of dots. Let's actually run this one. She looks almost the same. Yeah. She makes it so we don't see Timmy, which wasn't in the in the challenge. See him? That doesn't matter. So her, her way of coding is, was for each dot, so it's a hundred dots. So she, so she does it for every, 
every dot. So team dot dot, as she makes a, a random color for each dot, which I didn't know you can do it this way, which is very clever. And then he moves forward 50, 50 bases. So if dot count 10 equals zero, so every 10 dots, he moves up again to the side, just like mine did. But in shed, she does it this way. Which uh, I don't like that much. And I don't like the look of this that much, but it works exactly the same way. Works perfectly fine. But yeah, today was it was fun. I like the GUI. The GUI programming. It's very easy to comprehend when you see everything so clear. Um, but yeah, thank you for listening and have a good day.